Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I will take a look at how to use the Avada flip boxes element. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon to be notified of all new content. Okay, let's begin. The flip boxes element allows users to display animated boxes with content on both sides. Flip boxes look very cool and there are a range of options for customization. I've imported the craft beer pre-built and just down the page here, I've created these three flip boxes. When I mouse over them, they flip to reveal the back side of the box, and when I mouse off, they flip back to the front. There are so many possibilities with this element. Let's have a look at how I made these ones. I'll just go to the builder and edit the element. The flip boxes element is a parent and child element, which means there is a children tab for the flip boxes and a general tab that configures the flip boxes as a whole. Each flip box also has a general, design and extras tab for full customization. But let's start back with the element general tab. The first option is the number of columns. Here I have set this to three. The flip boxes can be added into any size column and this option controls how many internal columns there will be for flip boxes. In this example, the flip boxes element has been placed in a one one column and there are three columns for flip boxes and three flip boxes have been created. If I change this option to one, the flip boxes will increase in size to fit only one across the column and the others will go into rows beneath. If I change it to four, the flip boxes will shrink and there will be space in the column for a fourth flip box. Okay, let's put it back to three and look at the flip effect. There are two options here, classic and 3D. The default in this case is classic, but I have set them to 3D, which gives them a three dimensional feel that you can best see when the boxes flip. I'm still trying to get my head around how that works, but it looks very cool. The next option is flip direction. Boxes can flip left, right, up or down. These are set to the default, which in this case is flip right. Then there is the flip duration. This is in seconds, and here I have set it to 0.8. You can select anywhere from 0.1 to a full two seconds. The next option is equal heights which can be very handy when your boxes have differing amounts of content. Here it's on default, which as we can see in the description is no, and in this case this is okay as all three boxes have the same amount of content. The next option is front title size. H2 is the default, and that seems right to me. Under this is a full typography option set. I haven't used this as I'm happy with the defaults, but you can customize your title any way you want. After this are the same two options for the back title. Here it's set to H3, and again it's using the default typography. The options now move on to the icon. As this is on the element general tab, it's important to remember that these settings will affect all flip boxes in the element, though they can of course be overridden in the individual flip boxes. Here no icon has been selected, which means the icons are coming from the individual child items. All the other icon settings have been left at the defaults, and I have otherwise configured the icons on an individual basis. Finally, if you prefer an image to an icon, you can add an icon image in the next option, and if you do this, you can set the maximum width of that icon in the icon image max width option. Again, you can set this on a global level here in the general settings, or independently in the child items. Just remember that the child item settings will always override the parent options, so if I set it here, it wouldn't show as there are icons set at the child level. Under this is a margin option, which is for the element as a whole. The remaining options in the general tab are element visibility, which of course allows you to show or hide the element on various screen sizes, and the CSS class and CSS ID options if you want to further customize the element with custom CSS. Okay, so now let's look at the children tab. This is where you create your individual flip boxes. It has the same functionality as all parent and child elements, with various options to add new flip boxes, to clone or delete them, and of course to edit them. Let's edit the first one here to see how it's put together. It starts on the general tab, and the first option here is flip direction. Here it is set to default, which just means it will take the value set in the parent options. But in this way, you could have different boxes flipping in different directions. The next two options are for the headings on the flip boxes on the front and back side respectively. Note how I don't have a heading on the back side. Then comes the content. First is the flip box front side content, which you can see here, and under that, the flipbox backside content. The backside content field has an editor, 
so you can add custom content. So if I mouse over my first flip box, we can see there is an image element and a button on the back side. You could add these individually using the Avada Builder element generator here. Or as I did, you can also just create your content on another page and copy and paste the elements into the editor here. Finally, in this tab, we have all the icon and icon image options. If you want to override the options set in the parent general tab. Here I have set an individual icon and color and turned the icon circle off, but the other options are on default. So next we have the design tab, which controls the appearance of the individual flip box. You can have colors or images on the flip boxes. And in the first option, you can set the background color front side. Here it's on the default of color seven. The next option is for a background image on the front side. This image does not replace the icon or the content as it's a background image and fills the entire flip box. I have an image inserted here and we can see it fills the area and replaces the color. But if we go back to the color and set a global color and reduce the opacity, we can actually use the color as an overlay to the image if we wish. I'll just remove that. The next two options control the color of the heading and the text for the front side. And then we have the same set of four options for the back side, the background color, an option for a background image, and the heading and text colors. The last options are for a border. And if you have a border, you get a border color option as well, and a border radius option. I have set the border to five pixels, the color to color one, and the border radius to 20 pixels. Finally, there is the extras tab. The animation options here affect the individual flip box and you can choose from one of seven animations and control the speed and timing of the animation as well. Here I have set a slide animation at 0.8 of a second with a 0.4 delay when the top of the element hits the bottom of the viewport. This flip box is coming in from the left, but the second one is coming from the bottom and the third one is coming from the right. Okay, let's go back to our page on the front end and refresh. I'll just scroll down and there you can see the animations take effect. I'll just mouse over the flip boxes once again and try to decide which beer I want to buy. So as you can see, with some creativity and good design, you can create amazing flip boxes that are sure to grab your viewer's attention with this flexible and easy to use element. Okay, that's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.